The Louisville spring game is behind us, and most of the team needs are centered around depth. We'll identify the top three positions of need on today's episode of the Locked On Louisville podcast. Stay tuned. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Locked On Global Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Locked On College. Terms and conditions apply. As always, I want to personally thank you all for making this your first listen of the day. Just a reminder, the Locked On Mobile podcast is free on all streaming services five days a week, your team every day. The spring game is behind us for the Louisville Cardinals. It's now time for the program to finalize their roster for next season. Um, we'll identify the three uh, positions of need that the team could address in the portal. Um, Most of it is centered around depth. However, it will be one offensive position and two defensive positions. We'll start on the offensive side of the ball for the first segment. But like I mentioned, a lot of it is centered around depth. It's a testament to just how good Jeff Brom and company did this offseason in addressing almost all of the needs for this team. Not only did they bring in some starting caliber guys, but they also went out and they added some much needed depth to pretty much every spot. You look at the spots that were you know needing attention back in December. It was tight end, it was wide receiver, and it was cornerback. And Brom and company went out and got multiple players at each position, not just in terms of numbers, but very, very quality players as well. So this whole episode really should just be a testament to how much the staff knocked it out of the park. But I still think that there are some positions, if you want to really put this under a magnifying glass and determine which positions of need are the top ones, I think that there are three that mainly stand out. Number one for me is wide receiver. And again, don't take this as me saying, well, Dalton's saying that the room's not good enough. I think that I'm suggesting quite the contrary. I'm thinking that all three of these rooms are good enough. I would just like to see some more depth added. I think if you want to make the argument that a room does need an upgrade, perhaps you could say the wide receiver room. It's really hard to gauge just how good the room is right now because. Um, Colin Lacey is not at full strength. Ja'Cory Brooks missed the spring game due to injury. Uh, Jimmy Calway missed it due to injury as well, due to a foot issue. And you have some other guys that you're looking to, to step up. One of those players being Chris Bell. Chris Bell arguably had the best spring game out of anyone on the roster. So he had two touchdowns, made some big time plays, scored on the first play of the spring game. Most of the fans, I feel like, look at the wide receiver spot and they think, I mean, what else could you need? I think that you can make the argument that depth is needed. I would really feel comfortable if Louisville went out and they got one more difference maker at wide receiver. And it seems like rumblings through the grapevine suggest that the Cardinals are looking to do just that, um, potentially – using the NIL money slotted for Penny Boone and now putting that uh, towards a a pretty solid wide receiver. And it's not really an indication of the the top-of-the-line players in this group. I mean, Colin Lacey, despite not a great spring game, I still think he's going to be one of the best receivers in the ACC. Ja'Cory Brooks, when he gets healthy, is going to be a difference maker, speedy receiver from Alabama. I have my eyes on the development of Chris Bell, and if the spring game is any indication of how good he's going to be this year and the step forward that he's going to take, 
I you have to feel pretty good. But after that, you're sort of in uh you're sort of dealing with a group to where you're looking for multiple players to take that next step forward. You have some returning guys like Jimmy Callaway and Jaden Thompson, two veteran transfers from last cycle that I think you're looking to take that next step. Jimmy Callaway probably being the most notable of the two, but Thompson has made some strides in the spring as well. You have some younger players. Well, there's the FCS, um, or the I'm sorry, the D2 um, transfer, Antonio Meeks, who we'll see what his role is going to be. But you've got some younger receivers. You have some walk-ons that might factor into some playing time. Um, most notably, in that room, there is uh, Kataris Hicks from the South Florida area. Made a little bit of a name for himself last offseason when he joined the program, but this year sort of the same thing. In spring, you have four-star true freshman JoJo Stone, who he is a true freshman, so who knows exactly what you will be able to rely upon from him. Multiple other guys at the position, but – I think if there's one position that you can look at on this roster and suggest that they could benefit the most by adding another difference maker, I would argue into saying that it's wide receiver. If you go out and get a um, player that can play on the boundary, play out wide, I think that Ja'Cory Brooks is probably – I mean, it's hard to tell because Colin Lacey can play inside. He can play out, but most of his work is going to come from the slot, I believe. Chris Bell and Ja'Cory Brooks, that rounds out a solid top three nucleus with this group, but you need some very, very quality depth. I have faith in Thompson and Callaway, and I have some hope for Antonio Meeks and for Kataris Hicks. But outside of that, you, you could still go by adding another player depth-wise and adding another dynamic player to the mix. Ultimately, I feel like would just maximize the overall ceiling of this offense. It could even raise the ceiling. Braun made it a point of emphasis in the post, post-spring post game press conference to confirm that they're going to look to throw the ball downfield more. That is um, an indication of Tyler Shuck at quarterback and his skill set compared to Jack Plummer's. I think you're going to see more throwing the ball vertically downfield versus out routes to the sideline, slants over the middle, and a focus on running the ball as much as they did. Now, Luba will still make sure that they, um, you know, commit to running the football, but there is going to be more of an emphasis on throwing it as well. So I'm interested to see who they end up going after. From a couple people that I've heard from personally, it seems like they're looking to make a splash at the wide receiver position here in the next couple weeks, I would say. One thing to note is that there are going to have to be some more guys enter the portal for Louisville to add another player or players because they came into the spring, I think, five scholarships over the mark. You had Jalen Alderman. Ruben Unige, Penny Boone, and I believe some other players put their names into the transfer portal. But you need more. You would have to ultimately get into the green before you can start adding players. So you have to get down to that 85 scholarship level. And I'm not necessarily sure exactly the number we're at right now. I want to say it's probably high 80s, like 88, 87. But more players are going to have to leave. And who knows exactly um, what positions those guys are going to come from. But for depth reasons, I'm confident in the top three. I think if you're Jeff Brown, you're trying to maximize this season with um, maybe not as favorable as last year, but still a decently favorable schedule, the 12-team playoff, looking to maximize the offensive skill set. And you look at the other positions across the board, not much help needed there. And by numbers – wide receiver is a spot that you want to be, you know, in tune with with having a good amount of depth at the spot because of how many can play at one time. Same goes for the trenches, cornerback, defensive line. But 
as it relates to the other players on the offense or the other positions, quarterback, I mean, you feel good with Tyler Shuck, Pierce Clarkson as well. You got some other guys, Brady Allen, Harris, Harrison Bailey, that can make some plays. Even though you lose Penny Boone, I'm okay with the running back room at the moment. If you want to say that running back is a spot to add some depth, I won't disagree with you. Um, but you have Maurice Turner, Don Chaney Jr., and then Isaac and Kewan Brown. And I feel very, very good about that room. Tight end. It's almost too crowded at the moment. And then you're going to add Mark Redman into the mix. And then offensive line, offensive line, we'll talk about it a little bit further into the show. It felt like there was going to be a mass exodus within the group. And then it seems like a lot of those players sort of walked back those rumors. And the only portal offensive lineman that I think of that truly has entered the portal at this point in time is Houston transfer Ruben Unige. So if there's just one player that's entered the portal on the line and, um, there's some other rotational guys that have not seen much time, but um, I think Maquette J is in the portal. Gway, uh, I'm not really sure. I, I think I've had that name pronounced for me before, but uh, I apologize if I'm saying it incorrectly. Wide receiver is probably my clear top position of need. Again, we're sort of splitting hairs when it comes to depth. So just because the position is a position of need in this episode doesn't mean that Louisville has to, by all means, address it in the portal. It's just a matter of putting it under the magnifying glass and finding where the holes are. We now go to the defensive side of the ball. Louisville lost a player at this position last week. That is pretty much the reason why this position made the list. We'll discuss um, that momentarily after we tell you about our friends over at LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. It's not just another job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like professional on LinkedIn. Just post your job for free now at linkedin.com slash college. That's linkedin.com slash college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. The NFL draft is just under a week away. And just a reminder, the Locked On NFL Mock Draft is available now. You can find the ultimate six-episode series on Locked On NFL Draft to hear who the local Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft is available now on the Locked On NFL Draft channel on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. I mentioned right before the break that the inclusion of this position on this episode was completely due to the position losing a player last week. You can make the case that this is a living episode. So the top positions of need might change depending on if other players enter the portal, like if a Possible starting level guy enters a um, enters the portal from I no no like foreshadowing here, but let's just say for the sake of reasoning, let's say an offensive lineman, like a starting offensive lineman. Then you could say, well, yeah, now offensive line is a top three position of need after the spring game. Louisville has to, even if they don't bring in another player, they still have to lose more because of the overall scholarship number that they are currently over at the moment. But back to that second position, the linebacking position is the first one on the defense that we're going to talk about on the show. The position lost Jalen Alderman to the portal last week. Alderman, multiple game starter, probably double digit game starter, has helped this program the past three seasons, had the pick six against UCF his freshman year and has been, at the very least, well, 2022 didn't really have that much of an impact, but 2023, he was a starter, had a breakout year, fourth on the team in tackles. You lose Alderman. You lost Jackson Hamilton to the portal. 
You lost um, some other guys that are playing that spot. And when I say linebacker, I'm more so pointing towards the inside because the outside, you have Ben Perry, you have Antonio Watts, you have Tamarian McDonald, potentially, uh, depending on his role, maybe Tez Nicholson, maybe Blake Ruffin. You could go a couple different ways. It's versatility. Defensive backs can play the outside linebacker position um, for the Cardinals, you know, dropping back into coverage. It's the inside that I'm focusing on because losing Jalen Alderman, you go from a room that had probably just enough depth to, eh, you could probably work on getting another body into the mix. Right now, TJ Quinn is probably a penciled in starter. Outside of that, it's probably between Geronte Davis from Texas A&M by way of Jackson State. Or Stanquan Clark, I think Jalen Alderman entering the portal is probably, in my opinion, an indication of just how good Stanquan Clark is, and that he's probably going to be one of the starting linebackers this season for Ron English's defense. So you have TJ Quinn, you have Stanquan Clark as your starters at the spot. And then, not to mention, you throw in Geronte Davis, who was a situational player this past season for Texas A&M didn't really have a good year of grants and he was behind a good amount of top guys on that Texas A&M defense like Edgerin Cooper and company. But I, I still think that he projects to be a rotational player in this defense. And I'm interested to see what he's going to be able to bring to the table. So you have a player in um, Geronte Davis that you can throw into the mix. I don't think for some of those asking, I don't think TJ Capers is going to project to be an inside linebacker. I think he's probably outside playing as the Leo in this defense. So I'm not really going to include him in this specific hypothetical. So um, the other amount of depth, you have Trent Carter, who freshman class from Jacksonville, Florida, actually – didn't have that bad of a spring game. The six foot three native of Jacksonville plays for the Boyle School, um, who Brian Smith, national recruiting analyst for the Locked On Podcast Network, went on the show about a month ago after the um, National Signing Day and was raving about the program that Carter came from and that you know he could be a guy that could play maybe even early on, depending on your depth. But looking at that, that's sort of the, the four scholarship linebackers on the team currently. I'm interested to see if Antonio Watts makes a little bit more of a shift to the inside, which he very well could. And that could be an X factor is linebacker becomes less of a need if Antonio Watts ends up making the shift to inside, which I believe he played a little bit last season. Watts had pretty much a breakout year was, I think I think he was top. 10, if I'm not mistaken, number 10 in tackles. He had 30, but delivered some big time hits. Six foot two from Columbus, Georgia. Six foot two, 225 pounds. If the coaching staff says, hey, look, you know, we've got Ben Perry, we have Blake Ruffin, we have Tamari McDonald at that position, maybe we look to, you know, shift um, Antonio Watts a little bit more to the inside. That's pretty interesting, and I think that that is definitely something that could maybe not change my mind, but maybe think twice about um, positions of need. I think adding another player to the mix at the linebacking core, um, personally for me, a multiple-year guy, or just go. Well, you off Keith Brown to the portal as well, so just multiple players, and I, I think I would feel more comfortable if you brought another player in to replace the – scholarship number that you had with the loss of Jalen Alderman. Again, you're magnifying the roster here. You can go a couple different ways with this. It, it's just depending on the depth. I think edge, you might be able to make a case for, but you're feeling good about where you're at edge rushers. Safety, safety room almost feels kind of too crowded at the moment. And then cornerback, you, you feel good about the depth at cornerback. So you look at the defensive side, I think linebacker, is probably the spot that I feel like could use the most depth because even though you're only starting two inside linebackers usually on the defensive side in any given game, you know, depending on 
the look from the offense and what you're trying to accomplish. Things can change depending on you know your game plan for a certain game. But linebacker is probably the other top need along with wide receiver. The third one, however, you can go a couple different ways. I went back and forth here, uh, but I'm going to go to the trenches. Which side? We'll answer that here in just a moment. Uh, before we do that, I want to tell you about our friends um, over at FanDuel. The NBA playoffs has started. NHL is starting as well. Baseball continues to get into the full swing, and FanDuel once again, remains your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 guaranteed win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all in an app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel continues to be America's number one sports book. The third position of need after the spring game as it relates to this hypothetical i went back and forth on. i didn't want to go with any skill positions sort of because of the reason that we talked about in the first segment defensively the the back half you have the numbers so it was between offensive and defensive line if the rumors were true that multiple offensive linemen especially the ones rumored like lance robinson uh, Michael Gonzalez, Madden Sanker, Luke Burgess. I mean, it was a wild report that like five offensive linemen were entering the portal and immediately like over the course of the day, it was getting walked back further and further and further and further to where the only player actually entering the portal to our knowledge on April 21st was Ruben Unice, who hasn't played a single snap for Louisville. Um, and, I don't think that that's that large of a loss for this group. I think that Monroe Mills and Jonathan Mendoza are the real deal. You have Michael Gonzalez, who's an all ACC level player. You have, um, you know, Pete Nigra and Austin Collins at the center spot. When Renato Brown gets healthy, healthy, he looks to slide into that right guard spot. And then you have very solid depth as well. I went with the defensive line for this third hypothetical. And part of it, actually a really good part of it, was because of Jermaine Lole entering the portal. And judging based upon who he's getting some interest from, I mean, it just goes to show you how good that room is. You got a transfer portal commitment from Thor Griffith, who could be an all-ACC caliber guy, as well as Des Tell, returning player Jared Dawson. You have some local guys in the mix like Micah Carter, Sadiq Clements, um, Lou Spencer. There's the Florida International Transfer, Jordan Gerard, who looks better in spring ball than maybe I thought he was going to. You look at the interior of the defensive line, and they have solid numbers. Like I said, I'll continue to say it. There's not like a clear position of need. Maybe, maybe you could say wide receiver. Let's put that to the side. Let's say even though you think wide receiver could be one, outside of that, there's not that large of a need at the defensive line. Or I'm sorry, at the roster as a whole. You could I'm gonna say defensive line because, like for linebacker, you lost a key player at that spot. You have Thor Griffith, you have Des Tell, who, in my opinion, are going to be the penciled in starters in the group. Um Maurice Davis, freshman from Albany, Georgia, had some plays made in the spring game that I think turned some heads. But you've got some younger guys like Micah Carter, R.J. Sorensen, Toffee Thomas. The list goes on trying to de determine who's going to be the valuable depth in this room. But those guys look to, to play the part. And then you have... Wu Spencer, Sadiq Clemens, some other local guys in the room. For me, I would say probably defensive line. Uh, well, Selah Brown, forgot to mention Selah Brown. Ramon Perrier, also on the interior, six foot three, redshirt senior from Eastern High School. Had some solid moments this past year. 
I would just say interior because the team is already struggling with some, um, you know, health issues. Now, granted, it's only the spring, but case in point, I would like to have depth at the spot because there's such an impact made on the interior that, you know, if you can stay healthy and have some rotational players, because you're rotating on the interior of that line. And if you can have a solid two deep, but also some good players on the outside looking in that can um, compete with depth, can give you some insurance in the middle. I'm already feeling, I'm not going to say concerned, but a little uneasy due to some of the health issues on the interior, but it is what it is. It's early. It's spring ball. And you just never know, though. So, again, this was really not an easy hypothetical. I'm interested to hear what you all have to say. I want you to tell me your top three positions of need after the Wolf of Football spring game. You can rank them if you want, um, or you can just list them off. I'm interested in hearing this because I had a, a pretty solid debate about what that third position was. I went interior defensive line. There's some others that went running back because of Penny Boone entering the portal. There are some that went with offensive line because you're looking to, you know, maybe lose some more to the portal because you have to get under the scholarship number. But who knows? At the end of the day, I feel comfortable right now saying that if Louisville were to add a guy, you're looking wide receiver, maybe linebacker. Um, there is a Rutgers defensive lineman that apparently Louisville either has hosted this weekend or is hosting soon. So it would go to show you that Louisville still is looking to add to the defensive line. And who knows, with the log jam at that spot, to get under the scholarship number, maybe some, maybe they're anticipating some other defensive lineman to enter the portal. And maybe that gives them some space and they try to uh, mitigate some of those losses by Say, hey, look, let's, let's just bring in some rotational defensive line pieces. So I'm interested to see what happens here in the next couple of weeks, um, you know, heading into May, seeing what happens with this roster. Hopefully Louisville doesn't lose any more key players, and we can feel really good about uh, this team heading into the offseason. There was a lot of players banged up over the past couple of weeks, and, and hopefully they can get nursed back to full health. So. Hopefully there will be um, – I'm looking to bring Grant Mulligan onto the show to have a spring game recap. Uh, there will be some – obviously some basketball portal talk. There will be another episode on Sunday evening as we get closer and closer to May, so be sure to tune into that. But that's going to wrap up today's episode of the show. Everyone have a great end of the weekend, great start to the week. We'll see you right back here very soon.